and the man himself. Hello, one and all, Mickey here. We are back with Hand of Fate. This time, we're going to be taking care of Skeletor, the Jack of Skulls. Although I didn't realise at the time, last week, the music was just that little bit too loud. I have lowered it a lot. And frankly, even that might be too high, but, well, you guys will let me know, right? Even my weakest opponents seem to be getting the better of you. Try harder. I do like a challenge. I don't know what you're talking about. But okay, dealer. So, the cards I've picked for this Once run. Once more you meet the Jack of Skulls. Good luck. As for the weapons and the items, I've picked obviously anything that is special and the basic stuff, I have brought as many maces as I could because obviously we're going to be, we know for a fact, we're going to be facing um, skeletons and maces deal extra damage to skeletons and also have a chance to impair their ability to resurrect, which is going to be important when it comes to the Jack. And as for the encounters, just quickly, I've got rid of anything that I've finished. Basically, there are no tokens available to be given as rewards and I've added anything that has new or has a token remaining. On top of that there are all the cards that are locked that are part of this journey including the Maiden for some reason as well as Mr. Lionel, no idea why. The only card I can't add is the Indecent Arrival which is just how it has to be, there's not enough room in the deck. 12 out of 12, that card will have to wait for another time. And obviously we are going with the Warlord. And that about covers everything, let's get going. I will add my own cards to the deck. How boring life would be without a little spice. Oh, so true, Dila. Ever the wise man. Hopefully things will go a little bit smoother this time. Um, play for life and death. Prepare yourself. Thank you. That boss, the Jack of Dust, I kind of screwed up there quite a bit. Um, wasn't keeping track of things and I lost way too much health, more than I really should for the first boss. Start the journey with the Landlocked Lover. This is the Kraken set of cards, I believe, one of the DLCs. Pretty sure that I need a lot of money here? Let's find out. We play for a token now. The door to the Landlocked Lover opens with a crack breaking the silence like a thunderclap in a tomb. The proprietor greets you. Welcome, traveller. Before I can treat you with our hospitality, I must ask you a very important question. Have you seen, heard, or God forbid, smelled a kraken? Um, I'm not sure which is going to lead to me getting that token, so let's just indulge him. What exactly is a kraken? The landlord stares at you in disbelief. He proceeds to rant and rave for nearly an hour about the dangers, claws, feeding patterns and scents of the Kraken. Let's really hope it's not an hour. After which you learn that his name is Carlo and in years past he sailed the seas as a captain. He now owns this inn and stays as far away from the sea as possible. After giving you some time to enjoy the warmth and some stale bread, Carlo approaches you. I've heard rumours of boats going missing from the small village port of Norwich. No survivors, no witnesses. Norwich port is run by bandits, thieves and smugglers. There's no way to know what's really happening there. Perhaps you could have a look around and find out more. I would go of course, but I have this place to look after. Carlo gestures to the empty, damp, ridden flea hole that he calls home. This card token is now yours. Well, I'm guessing either option would give me the token. I wouldn't imagine that he wouldn't talk my ear off if I just said, no, I haven't seen a Kraken. So Take give me that the token. token. It is yours. Thank you very much. Keep on going. And a shop. Well, I do have a bit of money. One of the few benefits of starting as the Warlord. For some reason, he has actually extra money as opposed to anybody else. In a shabby grove off the beaten trail, you find a traveling merchant looking to trade with wandering adventurers. Go on then, what have you got for me? So, items to buy. Damocles, a bit rubbish. Healing, as well, it's not exactly that great. Mercenary contract is amazing. 
and I think I'm gonna go for that. Basically, it can be activated twice, and every time it's activated, all the enemies in the area, in the arena, are tagged, and when you kill them, they drop money. So the more enemies in a battle when you activate it, the more money you get when you kill them. It only has two charges, so ideally you're gonna to wanna to activate it in two big separate battles, but typically it will easily pay off for itself. Another good choice is Fortitude Breath. As I mentioned last time, it will give you, or it will have you not consume food every third movement. So you're essentially using one third less food. But let's first sell my cap, which is completely useless. And offers me nothing. Um, food would also be a really good choice. But let's just risk it. Why the hell not? Go for Mercenary Contract. This will give me all the money that I need. Oh, three charges, my bad. Three charges, not two. Artifacts give you powerful abilities to use in combat. Cheers, thanks, dealer. And now with that two gold, I can't afford anything. So, let's head out. Hopefully not buying food um, won't come back and bite me in the butt. You can always review your cards here. Mercenary contract, once per combat. Press 2 to activate an aura that makes every successful strike drop gold. So, I wasn't exactly accurate. It's not whenever the enemy dies, it's just when you hit them. But still, nonetheless, the more enemies there are, the tougher they are, the more gold you should get. And on. Twisted Canyon. It Let's lives see. in every game. That initial moment where things begin. Are you going to interrupt me? On these cards all my with days, every single card that comes up. And the canyon up. has been there from the outset. I'll take that as a yes. Okay, so our opportunity to get a new weapon, assuming we don't fall down it. Can't remember if that happened last time. Probably did. Um, oh, and just for future reference, any card that doesn't have a new written on it, I'm not going to read the description because it stands to reason that we've already encountered it. So, I'm not going to read it for every single event. Choose from these options. Okay, so there was only one failure, it was over here. Everything else was a success, and one of the su successes, I believe this one, went to the top of the deck. Which means that it has to be a success. Good enough. Climb down there, draw one equipment card, and it is a bog standard mace. Well, I did put it into the deck to be picked up, because it's good against skeletons, so... Well, could have been anything, really. Are you sure but, that's the right approach? Do you mind? You have no idea. Have you actually gone into any kind of battle? Spoilers. The Maiden! Fair Merith. I'm not surprised to find that this encounter remains vivid in your memories. Now, I believe this is a new encounter. One day in the Shady Forest, you encountered an Elf Maiden. I really thought that it would have new up here in one of the corners, but I guess I'm just mistaken. She stops to greet you. I am Merith of the Forest Folk. My people have long helped the mortals of this realm. What boon would you ask of me? So, I can increase my maximum health, ask for food, or ask for gold. And later in the game, I can ask for blessings, or possibly to have curses removed? I can't remember. But I do know later on she can, she can give you random blessings. Considering I have three food and we're at the beginning of our journey, I think I'm going to say ask for supplies. Because the last thing I want is to start starving. So, yeah. Uh, Merith, can you give me some food? I'm starving. This bread will sustain you for many days. We'll see. Uh, pretty I'm rubbish. I'm sure you're grateful for that. I'm pretty sure that's the minimum that you can get. And... Hey, that's good. That's much better. So, 13 food from that, which isn't bad. The greatest of magical artifacts were forged long ago and have only limited uses before their power is spent. Use them wisely and they may guide you to victory. Farewell, mortal. What's that got to do with my bread? Are you trying to say that I could use my bread in battle? Ignore her, move on. Mr. Lionel again. I'm starting to wonder if you're simply leaving this card in as a quick way to get your hands on a shield. Okay, well, if you guys remember last time round when we encountered Mr. Lionel, I said that you could get a shield from him very, very easily. If you didn't have one, just ask him what he needed and he'd give you a shield. But bear in mind, the Warlord starts off with a shield and last time round, I asked him what he needed and he looked through my inventory and just picked out a thing at random. So I would be really careful what I tell him this time round. And no, I'm not going to be reading this because I know for certain this is not a new card. So, give him food. 
ask him what he needs, or ignore him. You know what? I've got a bit of food now, so I'm going to give you food and see what you give me in return. If I'm correct, as I mentioned in the previous episode, this means that he's going to give me more food? He considers the bread seriously before placing it carefully into his coat pocket. Seemingly satisfied. He took one food? Okay. Yeah, he considers for a while. Yep. And draws one food card. Okay. So yeah, I gave him one food. One of he my gives me cards. Five. A small benefit. I will not be so graceful for long. Remember, boy, when someone asks whether you'd like cake or pie, tell them you want cake and pie. Sure. Okay. All right, Lionel. Do you want to scamper away now? Bye, bye, Lionel. Okay, the end of the floor. Head downwards, if you dare. I think I will. Good. Now all you need to do is find and kill the Jack of Skulls and we can progress. Yeah, I know Many that. have reached this far. Further, in fact. I do not know if you have what it takes to do better than they did. Okay, now while the dealer was talking, I am going to stop off every shop that I come across, even if I don't have gold, because sometimes it can reveal items that I don't know the descriptions of yet. You don't have to get an item as a reward to uncover what the item does. Let's see if I get an example here. No, I don't. <laughs> so basically any card here that is face down means it's a new item, and when you look at it, the description that comes up underneath the item will then appear when you're setting up your deck and choosing what items to add. It will no longer be, this item is unknown, you need to find it in your adventures. It'll actually tell you what it is and what it does. So, we have nothing to do here. I'm not going to sell any of this. And I can't buy anything, so let's just get going. Devil's choice. I like this demon. He lies as often as he tells the truth. So the dealer was kind enough to give us a bit of information about the devil here. And yeah, it does actually say new. I don't know why the maiden didn't have new. Perhaps I did actually encounter her in the last episode and I completely forgot. But okay, so yeah, I will go with the rule that if it doesn't say new, then I won't read descriptions. So, Mr. Devil, what can I do for you? Again, a token is at stake. A cloaked devil appears in your path. I'm here to test your strength, so-called hero. Choose your foe. So... The devil, and how does he work? As the dealer said, he lies as often as he tells the truth. What that means is, here he's asking you what enemy or what groups of enemies would you like to face. Now, there seems to be about a 50-50 chance, maybe a little bit less than that, that instead of going with the card that you chose, he will then pick the other two. So, instead of saying, I would like to face two bandits, he might then say, well, you know what? I'm gonna get rid of this card and have you face the other two, which would then be five bandits. So as a general rule of thumb, with the Devil's Choice card, always go with the one that's most powerful and the most dangerous, because then it leaves the chance that if he does go with the opposite and chuck that card and go with the other two, then you're at least facing two lesser threats. So we'll go for the Three of Dust. Is it actually going to be the Three of Dust, Mr. Devil? It's not. Hmm, since that is whom you wish to fight, I think today I shall make you fight the others instead, just for fun. My point exactly. But hey, four enemies with the mercenary contract is better than three. So, you guys ready? And that is the Kraken in the background. <laughs> Oops. Oh my god, come on. I should probably practice in, bet in between sessions. Something to be noted about all the money that's dropping on the floor. You won't get it at the end of the match. So it might be a good idea, before you kill the last guy, to pick up all the money lying around. And with just that one encounter, I've nearly got back all of the gold that it cost to pay for that ability, if that's what you want to call it. It cost 40, I got back 36, and that was just from that one encounter. Okay then, devil. Excellent, the devil cries. You have passed my cunning test. Have some treasure. 
Perhaps next time our paths cross, I will kill you myself. The dealer draws you three game cards. The card's token is now yours. Now this card is actually really handy. It's a pretty easy way to get a lot of money, food or health in later playthroughs. The later cards of this set on the other hand are not. They, they are much, much trickier. The next card in line I believe is called the Devil's Wager and in that one he cuts your health down to about 10% and then tells you to fight just a random enemy. Hence why it's a lot more dangerous and this one by comparison is very easy. So let's see what we get. Food, always good, especially at the beginning of our journey. Equipment card, okay. Explorer's Helm, that's actually quite handy, especially this early on. And five max health, that's actually More health good. to work with, much good meat do you. And I get the, uh, the card token, which will lead to the Devil's Wager. The Song of the White Minotaur. Now, the Minotaur set of cards is pretty long and convoluted. I'm not sure which one this is going to be. Let's find out. As you plunder the secrets of your memories, you'll gain new cards. Some you'll wish you'd left untouched. This might be one of them. The Mug and Barrel Inn is renowned for attracting the most talented bards from all around. You arrive there wary from your adventures, but tonight's entertainment convinces you to settle by the hearth for a while. Hours pass and the crowd starts to thin. The bard begins to move around the room, playing requests for small groups. He serenades a pair of young lovers for a meager sum, and is then generously tipped the leading group of blacksmiths in a ruckus chorus of foul language aimed at the folks from the next town over. As you do. He approaches you. Well, well, well. We do have here a most distinguished adventurer. Not really. No tawdry tale of insipid chivalry or brash tribalism will do. You, sir, merit a stirring ballad of bloodshed, heroism, and death. Ah, oh, cheers, mate. The bard sings for you a fable of the White Minotaur, a legendary beast with an absolutely shit and god-awful weapon, we'll get to that later hopefully, who is master of both might and magic. Its power is such that it has felled every adventurer, bounty hunter or treasure seeker it has ever crossed. At the close of his song, the bard leans in close to you and whispers, the White Minotaur is no myth. I met a man two nights ago who hunts the beast as if it were its long shadow. I'd wager that any adventurer will be interested in the tales he told me over supper. All yours for a small donation. Oh crap, okay. Alright. So, I was keeping track of this card, which was a success. It went to the top of the deck, and then went over, and then looked like it went underneath. I believe it went to the bottom. Unfortunately, I don't know which one of these two cards is the bottom card. The both these cards came out from the bottom of the deck. I don't know which one was the bottom, though. So, I'm going to go with this one. Oh, son of a bitch. I'll take... Oh, you're fucking kidding me. I'll take all the gold in your pockets. I better at least get that goddamn token. Pay the bard all your gold. You know what? Fine. I've got that mercenary contract. As long as I get this token and get this card out of the way, fine. Agree. The bard bestows upon you all the knowledge that he has gleaned about the white minotaur. The card's token is now yours. Thank God for that. Or screw it. As I said, I've got that mercenary contract, so it shouldn't be too difficult to get a fair amount of money back. Dead King's Hall Crypt is right, rubbing. because last time round, I didn't I'm get not token. sure the dead fighting back makes this any more dignified. It does, actually. Otherwise, what the hell is a Tomb Raider? Let us stake a token on their foolishness. So let's see if I can get the token this time. This was the only card from the deck that I'd encountered, but I hadn't got the token. You've seen... Oh, right, I'd already encountered it, so let's not read it. Go straight with the monster cards. Dust and dust. Attempt to take my surprise. I'm guessing if I fail... That's where I didn't get the token. So, oh my god, okay. I'm gonna go with this one. I saw the success go underneath, and then I think it went on top. Yes. Attempt taken by surprise. Suddenly, you leap into the fray, taking one of them down before they can even react. Um. I'm actually going to get rid of the two of dust because I would like more money. And four of dust would mean that there's more money going to be coming out of them because there's more of them and the mercenary contract will in turn give me lots of gold. So you know what? I'm actually going to get rid of this one. Discard 
two bandits and I will fight four. Okay, okay, whatever. Okay, let's let them spawn. <laughs> right, I should probably let the animation finish. There we go. Going well so far, I haven't taken any damage. He said Rush doesn't take damage. No, 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 don't die! Okay. How about we collect all my monies first? I think that's everything. Oh, you're not even dead yet! Well, now you're on. Okay, 34 gold. I believe that's exactly what I got last time. Why? Well, if I get another 34, then that's a decent amount of money earned. You loot the room, the dealer draws you three game cards, and the cast token is yours. Excellent. That's actually quite a tricky um, roll to get that uh, huge success out of the other three cards. So, let's see what we get. One equipment card. It is... Chains of an Rage. An excellent way to turn an injury into an asset. Well, bear in mind, I actually have light armor, so any medium armor is going to be okay. During combat, strikes sustained from bows and wands have a chance to restore your cooldowns. This is probably one of the most armors in the game, seeing as there are two types of magical items. One is on a cooldown and has limited uses, so it's not often that you'd want to burn through those uses very quickly. And the other is your weapon, which has unlimited uses, in which case, sure, it wouldn't be that bad, but there are so many better armors in the game. So it's probably one of the few times that I'll even be wearing this armor. So yeah, put it over my light armor. Get 40 gold, that's actually really good, wow. And another equipment card, okay. Medium armor. Middle of the road in every way. Yes, it is. Well, the Chains of Rage already is a medium armor, so you know what? No, I'm not going to put it on. I'm just going to leave it in my inventory and maybe I'll sell it later. Thank you very much, dealer. Keep them going. Goblin King's Halls. Mr. Lionel, I see you I will there. happily wager on the outcome. I do not think you have what it takes. One night, as you lie in the forest clearing, you are disturbed by the sight of a shadowy figure watching you from the darkness. Well met, the goblin exclaims, stepping into the light and sitting by the fire. Just the armed warrior I've been seeking. Ah, oh, fine, go on then, elaborate. The goblin makes himself comfortable. My name is Mr. Lionel. I know, we've met. Twice. And I have a tale of woe to share with you, and perhaps an opportunity for you to make a tidy profit from my misfortune. Doubtful goes on to tell the story of his troubles with the King of Goblins, while lamenting his subsequent banishment from the Goblin community. The King could have shown leniency, he concludes, given that his daughter and I were both drunk from the excellent Dulcian brandy served at his coronation. I'm gonna go with that, Dulcian. Instead he opted to make his first official act my banishment. Now I'm okay with that. The fool will regret it though. Now it is time for revenge, he says eagerly, taking out a strange amulet. Whatever you got in your pockets, I really don't want to see it. I don't. For hundreds of years, the Goblin Kings have gathered treasure and hoarded it in a series of enchanted and ever-challenging treasure vaults. Okay, I'm listening. Only the Goblin King himself knows where his treasure vaults are hidden, but now I have a way to find them. I just need a lock of elven hair to complete the magical device. Well, this is unfortunate because we have already encountered Merith, which means we're not going to be encountering her again this journey. So this card won't be going anywhere, and I won't be getting the token because Merith has already come and gone. But sure, I'll accept the task. Why not? Excellent. Just get the hair by any means possible. Don't worry. I'll find you again once your quest is complete. So yeah, I would need to encounter this card first and then hope that I encounter Merith later down the line. And then this card would then be laid down in front of my path after I've encountered her. This card's token is now yours. I thought I had failed that because I wasn't in... Sure, whatever. Give me the token. With that, he returns to the shadows and sits down behind a bush watching you. Nasty. That... Ugh. Well okay. done. Let's just ignore the goblin sitting in a bush behind watching us. And we're the already undead. here. Of all the players in the game, these are the most dangerous in the world, yet in no natural form. A wrongness, an error, cheating. 
I really thought it'd be more flaws than this. Um, that mercenary contract turned out to be completely useless. The money that I would have got from the mercenary contract is completely wasted. In fact, I've got nearly 100 gold from that, and it's not going anywhere. You know what? Fine, let's go kill Jack here. This tenacious undead is unusually difficult to lay to rest. In addition to sheer strength, this skeleton has the power to revive recently defeated skeletons in his close vicinity. Well, I have a mace, so we'll see about that. Serving as captains to squads of lesser skeletons, these unholy abominations strike fear into the hearts of all warm-blooded folk. For until this fiend is defeated, their legions are effectively endless. Yeah, sure, you just go resurrect the same skeleton This token will again. unlock more cards if you can defeat this encounter. I think I'm gonna be okay. All right then, Jack, what have you got for me? Four skulls. And the man himself. Um, yeah, I, I'll Shots do the most of the contract. Shots cannot be deflected. You would do better Why to avoid not? them. Are you oh, right. agile enough? These guys can, um, block. And he is, in fact, resurrected. Do you mind? Oh, right, I can't interrupt him. He's resing. Which you think I'd be able to. Hey. Hey, you stay down. I see you. Okay, we need to be done with the minions. Yeah, we're done. Okay. I'll focus on you then. Um. Okay, that's Jack gone then. Wow, maces are really effective, aren't they? I took a fair amount of damage, but I think I'm okay with that. That, that went not bad. And to the victor. Ah, well done. Well done indeed. But you have roused the dead in their dusty tombs, and even I cannot say what will come of it. Oh, now our waiter dead. becomes more interesting. Will the tools you've earned suffice to address the challenges I pose? That is the question, is it not? Your meeting with Carla of the Landlocked Lover gains you this card. Which is Smuggler's Wharf. I believe this is one where you need to have a, a fair amount of money to proceed. I think it's like 300 gold or something pretty silly. But we'll find out when we get to it. Surviving the Devil's Choice, you receive Devil's Wager. That's for card. Hearing the song of the White Minotaur, you receive Hunting the Huntsman. Another step towards the White Minotaur. For exploring the Dead King's Halls, you receive Treasure Chest. Now, I believe this card is not worth it. I can't remember why. Um possibly Dark Souls style mim mimics, but yeah, we'll see if we can get to it. Joining Mr. Lyle's quest, this card gains a token. The Maiden. Um, I know, I've, I've already got the Maiden, if you want to give me a second one, sure. She only gives me items. I'm okay with that. As reward for defeating my skeleton Jack, you receive these new cards. Queen of Dust, Helpful Priest, Desert Storm, and the Crucible. The Queen of Dust, I'm guessing, is the next boss. The other three are all essentially quest lines that lead on to other cards and cards and cards and cards. So, those to look forward to. And finally, the rest of our reward. Yep, Skeleton Jack, yeah, got it. We get Consuming Shame, I can't remember what it does, Angel's Wing, Frost Fang, and Helm of Reflection. Some pretty good items, but we'll be seeing those next time. Shall we deal again? Not yet, my good sir, not yet. Guys, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you next video. Bye-bye! How, how am I going to get out of this one? Um, we need to...
clear a path. Take this! Whoa, what is going on with that zombie? Whoa, what is going on with that zombie? Ooh, physics, they're, they're not feeling good. They're really not feeling good. I think they're less aggressive during the day, especially when there's only one of them. Oh, you, you suck. Cough. Cough. I'm not going to bother with using that pump. Get out of it. I'm not going to bother with using that pump. Get, get, oh. I think I might be boned now.